All right, welcome back, F1 Manager Nation. I apologize, F1 Manager Legend has been busy with uh, real life uh, issues. It's Halloween, I've been dealing with some stuff with my ex-wife and my youngest son, uh, as well as the birth of my second goddaughter, who is now five days old, so I have been busy uh, trying to live my life, take care of all of my other responsibilities, as well as get to know a as much as possible a brand new person uh, in this world. So I do apologize for being gone. Uh, while I was away, I was reading the comments you guys have been sending me. I always appreciate the comments. I read pretty much every single one. And um, I really appreciate the fact that I'm over a hundred subscribers. Um, when I started this, honestly, I didn't think I would get 10 people to actually subscribe. So yes, I appreciate everybody that has subscribed, but I do have one question. Um, my videos have at least 250 views each. So where are the other 150 of you guys that can't just throw down the subscribe for me? It would really help out my uh, self-esteem. <laughs> anyway, so I've been away for a while. I do apologize. I got to get back into this game. Um, I did check some of my stuff to see where I'm at, what I got going on. And start off, let's open up the free crates for the day. And you can see I can upgrade Lance Stroll probably two times. But it's just not worth it. Because even if I upgrade him, he's not going to be good enough to uh, make the cut. never going to use this guy. Um, I've only seen probably probably about three people the whole time I've been playing this game actually use Robert Kubica and he pretty much has to pit every two laps. He's slow. Um, he drives all over the track and even if you upgrade him um, it, it just doesn't work out. I think the only stats he has are uh, passing and defending, but you know tire wear and everything else is so low, it's just not worth it. You'll never use him. Okay, I get a lot of questions as to my setup. At this point, I am using a level 7 Daniel Kvyat and a level 2 Sergio Perez. Um, there's a stat. You can see Sergio Perez. The only thing he really has going for him is consistency and tire management. Um, with those two things, I can keep him pretty competitive. Although I must say, Giovinazzi is kind of an upgrade. But even better yet would be Roman Grosjean. But you would take away all of his consistency, which means he's going to qualify all over the place. And I believe the fuel management would allow you, what was that, 70, yes, 70 uh, fuel management. I think that would allow you to sprint um, a little bit more than normal. But right now, I haven't played in over a week, so I'm not really going to change anything. Here are the car parts I'm using. So my brother um, plays this game as well, and he just texted me that on the same lap he had two cars, both of his cars um, 
have uh, have parts fail. Um, the only thing I can say is if you have both guys on your team. Sorry about that. If both guys on your team um, have parts that fail, you don't have to pit them both on the same lap. Um, you should be able to get one more lap uh, with a failed part. Um, I think I've gone as much as two. I don't want to push it because I believe if you um, try to stretch out a, a broken part, your car will um, break down completely. But um, you can split the, the two cars Especially if, you know, you have them, you know, about a, a pit stop apart, and then that happens, you know, the first car is going to be in there longer. Um, I would probably pit the second car first and let the first car go around and then have him come in and pit. Um, but, yeah, you don't want to pit them. That's if your tires aren't going to go down. If your tires are going to go down, you just got to bite the bullet and, and stack you guys. So this is where my parts are. Using um, a level five, the shoot over our, a level seven soft touch, a level four, the anchor, a level three slam stop, and a level two, what what I don't even know what the heck to call that part. Um, I'm using a, a level two epic torque over a level three shredder, a level five king kong, and a level six revolution. Um, the tracks I'm at racing, I need grip, which is why my car is set up with aero 52 and grip 50. If I was doing level one races, I would probably have my aero set up a lot higher because it's a much faster track. Um, I have been getting a lot of questions about how to set your car up. It's, I, it's, it's really hard to explain. I can't tell you what part to use, when to use it, because depending on the track, you might need more grip, you might need more aero. Um, again, my brother is at a point where his cars are breaking down. He's been complaining about that. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to go over and try and set up his cars, and I'm most likely going to have to take sacrifice, I'm gonna have to sacrifice some of his power, some of his aero, and some of his grip to bring up his reliability so that's no longer an issue. Um, even if I have to add to his pit stop, you know, when you, when you put a part on and it changes your pit stop time, you're getting like maybe one to two tenths of a second. If your reliability is low, you are going to have broken parts, which are going to cost you double your pit time in a pit stop so what I want to what I want to incur a broken part which is gonna make me sit in the pits for nine to ten seconds adding you know four to five seconds to my pit stop or would I rather make sure that my parts are reliable so I don't get that five seconds and give up a tenth of a second, maybe, you know, not 0.18 seconds in a pit stop. You see what I'm saying? So it's like you kind of have to balance whatever is costing you the most. If you are racing, let me see if I can give you guys an example. So you can see these tracks all have uh, a lot of curves in them, but also a lot of straightaways. So you have to have a car set up that's compatible. The races I'm doing now, there's not that many long straightaways on these tracks. You can see most of the tracks winds up being kinks and bends and curves. So on these tracks, I want to have more grip so that I can negotiate all of those turns.
these tracks aren't as bent as the ones I'm doing now. So on these tracks, I would want more arrow. These tracks are all pretty much uh, fast tracks, a lot of straightaways. <coughs> they have a lot of turns in them, but a lot of the turns are high speed turns, a lot of S's. So you're going to need more arrow than grip on those ones. These are the wet tracks. Um, honestly, when you first start the game, you want to put the you know, make your car as fast as possible. It, the grip and all that really doesn't matter. You just want to put the best parts. Whatever parts are going to put, um, give you the, the highest stats, you just throw them on. And as you get to this series, you're still going to be just whatever part you get that is better than the one that you have, you're just going to put it on. When you get to this series, this is when you're going to have to start looking at your drivers, okay? You're going to have to make sure that your drivers are um, capable in the rain because you're going to do a lot of uh, laps in, in the rain in these tracks. So you might want to sacrifice, you know, some of the, um, the other driver stats to make sure that your driver has good um, wet track ability. And again, by the time you're to this point, you're still pretty much just putting on the best part um, and pretty much the strongest driver that you can get. Now, when you get to Series 5, this is when you're going to have to start focusing on your, your, your setup. Um, this is when it starts coming to play because you're going to start taking some weird, some weird races where you, if you've been following like all my strategies and that, you get to Series 5, you're going to start coming up against racers that um, are much better than you. They start a lot higher up than you. And you're going to have a hard time catching them. And that's when you know that there's something wrong with your, your car setup. Um, something's not quite right. So you got to go in and figure out if you can um, start maneuvering different parts around, um, different combinations to, to get a better, um, a better quality car. And same thing with this one. Um, this is the one where I had to I had to change my whole setup. I think my one of my last two videos, uh, there was a period of about 20 minutes where I was going through trying to, to fix my car to make it stronger. Um, and once again, if you are in series five, stay in series five until you get all 300 flags. If you're in Series 1, stay in Series 1 until you get all 20 flags. Even though the, the Great Outdoors will become available before you get all those flags, you still want to get all those flags because it's going to make sure that you're not going up against um, competition that's too strong for you. <clears throat> Sorry for the delay. I'm trying to explain um, pretty much all the questions I've been reading while I was gone. Um, the only other thing I can say is if I was in series six and somehow I raced and I wound up broke with nothing, I would personally, if I didn't have, a, if I had a free crate, I would just use that. If I didn't have a free crate, I'd come up here into the free coins now and I'd watch one of these stupid videos. Sorry. I'm going to pause it. Okay, so I watched the video. It gave me 950 coins. Um, normally, you never wind up being actually flat broke. But after watching a video, I would then come and do one of these races, which... I'm pretty positive I could win, which would give me two, and I'd have to do another one, which would give me three, then I'd have to do one more, which would make it four, I believe, half one, that's two, one, 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 one. yeah, 
So three races in that, hopefully you win all three, and then you can get an entry to this, and basically just start over again. Um, but by the time you get to here, you should get a race crate, which will then make it the 16,000 one available. After a few of those, you just basically move back up. Um, it shouldn't be that hard. Okay, where are we? Okay, I'm going to pause it for a second. Okay, so we're going to Australia. I forget what my strategy was. I should have went back and watched the video. That's okay. I'll figure it out. Okay. Eleventh and nineteenth, that's enough spaces between. That's the reason why I want to use Perez so that I know I have at least one driver that's gonna qualify. It's gonna qualify good. Again, I like to Start my drivers off with that little speed boost because I think it makes them drive a little bit more aggressive at the beginning. Kind of sets the tone for the race. So we are going with a two stop strategy, and that's going to be a 3 3 2. On the 332, you want to cruise the first two laps and then sprint the third and then repeat. And after you set yourself to sprint the third lap the second time and you call yourself into pit, you do not need to change your power output. You can see his cars are going to have to come in and pit. Well, the second one stayed out. So his Giovinazzi. Oops, what am I doing? I forgot to set my glasses up. Um, his Giovinazzi is going to going to have the issues with his tires at the end of this lap. You can see his tires are almost dead. So right here in all these curves, his tires are going to go off the edge. And he's going to start to go real slow. Ooh. Okay, so I am cruising on soft tires, and his Kubica, I don't know why he's using Kubica, but with Kubica, he has to use hard tires. Um, his Kubica's not going to be able to catch me, because soft tires going slow are equal to pretty much hard tires going fast. So both my drivers are on lap 5.
so it's really important that you guys aren't really focusing on trying to win the entire race and come in first place. Um, at this point, at, at this type of, um, I'm, I'm not sure how to put this, um, this version of the game, which is the rival, um, rival game, is basically what allows you to build up your parts and your car and your drivers. Um, oh shoot, I forgot to... You know, I'm too busy talking to you guys. Um, each you gotta go slow, serve those tires. Um, So Perez is going to lose, uh, well, he didn't lose that much. Yeah, so um, at this point in the game, you should just be focusing on making sure that you're set up your strategy, um, your drivers are beating your rivals. Um, that's the that's the bar. That's basically what that's all this is trying to do. It's giving you uh, a means of learning the game, developing your strategy, and um, slowly building up your car and your strategy as you go as you play through the game um, if you remember back when you first started you didn't have much choice of a strategy because your cars you know your drivers are only getting like two laps on soft tires so that forced you to have to use the hard tires later in the game your, your drivers are going to start giving you three to four laps on soft tires so you don't need to use hard tires for the first half of the game or the race you see what I'm saying so it's like slowly over time you're building up building up and by the time you get to, to the point where you're a legend you should have pretty much all of your commons should be like level 9 almost about to be level 10 and at that point um, At that point, you're just um, fine-tuning your strategy and and your, um, your your car's performance. Okay, so we are at Shanghai. Two or three. All right. Okay, so what do we got? He's tenth and fifteenth. Okay, I 
get a lot of questions. What happens if you start at the back? Okay, well, we're going to see. So he's racing. Kids got to go at 50%. Yeah, it's going to be a stacking issue. Wow, I'm messing this race all up. Six is coming up. And you can see his hard tires. They're going to start giving him fits. He's stuck with those hard tires until the end of the race. And his Grosjean, sorry for the lag guys, his Grosjean. Look at all that tire that his Grosjean is not, not using. Okay, so the race is on. We got two laps. Both of my drivers have enough fuel to go high power to the end. <coughs> For some reason, he put hard tires on Grosjean. So instead of his Grosjean passing. I 
some of his verge on passing and catching up to all of the drivers. He's making it close. catch him and pass him. So I took the L on that one. Was that my strategy? I can't remember what my strategy was before I stopped playing. So there, you guys want to see what happens? Sometimes I lose when I start at the back. But I made it a close race. Never do this, ever. Never do any of these ones for this, this triple down offer. Basically they're giving you three entry fees for real world money. And that's a lot of real world money for three entry fees. You guys are using my strategy and you go back and start yeah if you go if you have to go back and start at the lower tiers um, the good news is you should be going up against people that probably aren't as skilled as you, so it shouldn't take you that long to get back up to where you were. Um, in my original account, there was a couple. There's a couple times where I ran out because I, you know, spent all my my coins upgrading stuff, and I figured, okay, I can have just one entry fee. And I used that one entry fee and I took an L. What is going on? Why am I... I was using Hamilton, and Hamilton is really bad on tires. Unless he, like, paid to upgrade them, but I don't even think he can really do that. to Hamilton's tire issue. What kind of rain do we get? Light rain? Okay, so it's going to take a while for the track to get wet.
can see even though the track's 23%, 25% wet on my sauce, my guys are still actually able to race, except KBI just went wide. Um, my guys are still able to race. Um, while the track is slowly getting wet. We're out and only four places behind. And second to last. Ugh. So now we are waiting until the track gets. And it's not going to get. get completely wet. He just put new wets on. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to catch him. He knows what he's done. Am I going to be able to catch Hamilton? That's a lot of track to make up. Man, these pit stops are so slow. Yeah, so as you can see, I didn't stand a chance from the beginning, but both my drivers finished in the top 10. So even though I wasn't going to win against my rival, I still did as, as good as I possibly can, and look, I finished with 32 points. So that's two races in a row I just lost. Can't stand it when that happens because I hate to lose. But that's all right. Because I'm about to get another race crate. All right, let's see what we get. Man, I'm taking some owls. I was at what 465. I, I thought I was gonna be able to like be done and start racing the series seven races, but no, they'd be messing with me right now.
Okay, we are at Suzuka. Hey, it must have been a qualifying. Thank you. Three, two, two. See how when you use it, you don't really gain anything. You see what I mean about trying to race at the beginning? I used up all that tire and all that fuel, and I didn't even gain a position on my teammate. In fact, I lost to him. So that's the main reason why you don't want to set your, um, your car up to race at the beginning. Because it just doesn't give you, you don't get a return on that, on your investment. Really? <laughs> Killing me. So we are at lap two. Just talked about this. I think that's why I need to go with uh, hard tires. So I don't think Perez is going to be able to gain enough positions so that I'm not going to have a backing issue.
So again, you can see I'm not going to win the race, but I am going to beat my rival. And that's the really the only important thing when you're playing this game. Eighth and fourteenth. I only needed ten points to get my race crate. Twenty-eight points. Not bad. No, I didn't. I got it. Awesome. So let's open up this race crate. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Oh, well. Oh, well, that's okay. So, let's see what we get. Do I get Valtteri Botas? Valtteri Botas. Oh, well. Okay. Um, cars. I can upgrade the wind tunnel. It'll give me plus two reliability. I can use it. So if I was having issues where this uh, broken component stuff kept happening, I would have to sacrifice some of my grip and my pit stop time to put this part on so that I would not have to worry about broken parts. That's kind of how it works. If there's a problem with your race that keeps happening that you notice, then you got to address that problem. Even if you try and upgrade them, nothing. So do you see how these drivers will never catch up? 
So it's just certain drivers that you just won't catch up. Um, maybe if you get a top-notch driver where all the stats are almost full, um, you might want to use one of these lesser guys so that your drivers aren't both um, uh, messing with each other's, you know, uh, too close. So your drivers aren't too close when they race. So you're not having issues with the pit stop. But by that point, your pit stop time should be so short that um, it's not really going to matter. So, again, there's certain drivers that you're just not going to use. I've never used uh, Gasly. i never used Signs. i never used Verstappen. Um, I never used Russell, Raikkonen, Vettel, Magnussen, Ricardo. Actually, later on, I do use Ricardo. I think by the time Ricardo is level um, three or four, I can use him, but um, he's not he's not the best option. Kubica, you're never going to use. I'm never going to use Lance Stroll or Alex Albon again, so there's no need in upgrading him. You're hardly, rarely going to get a Nico Hulkenberg. Um, on my other account, Nico Hulkenberg is only level two like low level two so certain drivers you're just not going to get um, Lewis Hamilton I think at Lewis Hamilton level four is going to be a pretty strong driver yeah so um, Yeah, I'm going to call this video, wrap it up. Um, again, guys, I apologize for the gap in download of, downloading content. But um, I am back. I'll try to be uh, daily again. And um, the only reason why, honestly, uh, the only reason why I really came back today was because I got a couple of uh, messages where people were wondering when I was going to download something new. So, um, I took some time out to come and, uh, get this out to you guys. So, um, I do appreciate it when you guys comment. I really appreciate it when you guys, uh, subscribe. Um, I haven't really checked the likes out. Um, I think the subscriptions are a little bit more impressive to me. So, I do appreciate all of you and... F1 Manager Nation. Um, all the feedback has been positive. I hear a lot of you guys are doing a lot better than you were, which is why I started this whole series. Just so you guys could see how the uh, how to play the game and uh, be a little bit more on the successful side. So, I'm going to wrap this up. You can hear my voice is starting to go. And it's getting late at night. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you very much.